As executive chef, I've always wanted to create a space where people like me can just come in and focus on their craft. You know, it's a seafood forward restaurant told through the lens of a lot of Ethiopian recipes where I could cook my food from my culture. It's a huge source of pride for me. Yeah! yeah. All right. Hello, early birds. Welcome to Hav and Mar. I'm the executive chef here. My name is Farel Abdullahi. Let's get you out of the cold. Come inside. Hav and Mar is owned by Chef Marcus Samuelson. This restaurant pays homage to both his Swedish and Ethiopian roots. It shows not only in the menu and the food, but also in the interior design. The woodwork is very minimalistic, as you would see in Sweden, but there's corners of this restaurant that are supposed to resemble huts in rural parts of Ethiopia. Our menu is seafood forward, told through the lens of the African diaspora, and I love it. But it's 8 a.m. and I really need to look at that prep list that tells me all the work that we need to do today. So let's get to work. Okay, so the prep list is left by our PM line cooks at the end of the night. Once they're done with service, they'll go through their stations and let us know what they need prepped for today's service. So looking at today's prep list, it's quite abundant. What I do in that case is I absorb some of the prep list and I'll also delegate some of it to my sous chefs. And I actually enjoy when I have to hop on some of this prep list because it keeps my skills intact and sharp. Our prep list is broken down by stations. Looks like Garde Manger got hit the hardest last night. This is a very extensive list. I can tell for me today, I need to make shuttle and ash oil, but I also need to touch base with my prep team to let them know what they should prioritize. Well, I'm gonna call Maria over. She is our prep supervisor. Maria. Okay, chiquita. Okay. Mucho prep for today. Garmanje, si. tenemos ceviche, mm -hmm. bron, mm -hmm. eh... Injera y tandoori butter primero. Okay. Todo bien? Okay. okay, gracias. <laughs> I didn't. That was the extent of it. First, let me grab everything for the ash oil. So it's 8.40 right now. This ash oil was born out of our desire to keep a close to zero waste kitchen. We also have a really good compost program where every day there's a guy who actually go, grows mushrooms in this building on the top floor. So we donate all of our compost to him. He grows mushrooms with them and then he brings the mushrooms right back down here. So that's as local as it can get. So the ash oil, I know this looks like trash to you, but it's not. I promise you I'm gonna make something super delicious out of this. Instead of composting this, we're like, can we actually make something edible out of it? So right now we have skin of an onion, scallion tops, some scraps from red onion pearls. So all of these things, we throw into the oven at 550 degrees. Haha! -ha. It's like the only time in kitchen history where your goal is to burn your ingredients. All this burnt ash is gonna go straight into the blender with a little bit of salt. It looks like dust. Now's the time to add the oil. That was like, you ever been around a campfire and you inhale all that smoke? This is what that, what that tastes like, but I don't know, in a very delicate way. So we actually use this in our hamachi with black ceviche. The black ceviche part comes from the ash oil. It brings a lot of smokiness into elements of the dish that you wouldn't otherwise expect. I'm gonna get started on my next project, which is the shiro. Shiro is an Ethiopian stew that's made with ground chickpea flowers. This shiro gets used in our Umi's Uran dish. Umi is my mommy. Even though shiro is a stew in Ethiopia, it turns out shiro makes a really good sauce for some noodles. Shiro starts off with classic Ethiopian sofrito. It's onions, garlic, tomato, and barbare. Barbare is an Ethiopian spice that's made out of sun-dried ground chilies. Shiro is ground chickpea flour. And in most cases, it, it already has the barbare built into it. So today I won't be adding any barbare to our, our stew. In order to control your food costs at a restaurant level, you do have to know exactly the amount of everything that you're put in or else you won't get an accurate food cost. So in this case, it's 30 grams of garlic. So even though I follow it, sometimes I'm like, hmm, I think my mom would add more. 350 grams of tomatoes. That comes up to about two tomatoes. But like I said, 
If it doesn't look like my mama's, I will adjust. Which is why I like to do this recipe myself most of the time, because, you know, I'm the only one that has my mama's heart in my, in my veins. It took a while for my mom to be proud of me. You know, classic immigrant story. She wanted me to move to America to become a doctor as most of my siblings did. And when I told my mom I wanted to be a chef, she wasn't ecstatic about it. But I told her, mom, at the end of the day, I still wear a white coat, just like your other daughters. <laughs> now that, you know, she sees me on TV and stuff, she, she could finally brag about me to her friends. Yo, Herb, you got a bench scraper? No. Yes? Thank you. Bench scraper is actually one of my favorite tools in the kitchen, just because you saw, that's why. All right, so I'm gonna cook down the onions and garlic until they get nice and translucent. I'm gonna add the tomatoes now. I'm gonna wait until this cooks down a little bit. I'm going to add some water. We're gonna wait until the water boils. So this is kind of a tricky uh, name because shiro is both the name of the ingredient, the ground chickpea flour, but it's also the name of the stew itself. So I'm gonna whisk it in, making sure that I don't get any lumps. Shiro is a common ingredient because the stew itself is one of the most well-known dishes in Ethiopia. Chickpea is a thickening agent, so as it reduces, it's going to start to thicken up. So I'm gonna let the shiro do its thing. I'm not going to put a lid on it because we wanted to reduce. I'm going to hand it off to one of my prep cooks because last step is just to blend it. It's about 10.30, I have to start tasting everything that uh, my prep cooks have been prepping this whole time. Okay, Maria. Hello, Hepa. <laughs> yeah. So I see now that Maria has started making our barbare honey. This is what we toss our fried chicken in for a dish called Addis York. What we're doing here is, it's a very traditional Ethiopian stew called Dorowet that we serve in kind of like a New York style. We serve it with a fried chicken and that fried chicken gets tossed in this Barbare honey. So when I'm tasting things with Barbare, I always have to take into account that my threshold for spice is much higher than a lot of other people. So if it's too spicy for me, it's gonna be too spicy for the average palate. Okay, Luis, yes. tandoori butter? Yes. So tandoori butter is what we cook our whole fish in. So in this case, I'm looking for spice level. We have serranos in here. The tricky thing about using any kind of pepper is the spice level is never gonna be the same. So all peppers are not created equal. There's curry powder in here as well. Cool, so tandoori butter is ready to go. I didn't actually have too many notes for Maria and Luis and that's because their palate has been trained in the last four months to uh, taste what I taste and to taste what I'm looking for. So I need to start checking in on our other teammates. I need to check in with our butcher. I need to check in with our receiver. And then it'll be time to go on our lunch breaks. So it's 12.30, lunch break is over, but it's perfect timing because our deliveries just got here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some quality check on your back. So Herbert um, is our receiver. He checks in all our deliveries for me. So making sure that we got everything that I ordered, but also making sure that, you know, our uh, companies haven't sent us bad quality stuff. So I ordered rainbow Swiss chard. They sent regular, but that's fine. Blackberries. We don't have no cilantro. I got cilantro. Nope, it, it didn't come in. Nope. Okay. Cilantro didn't come in. So that's a problem because I ordered a pound. And they didn't even put it here. So it's gonna have to be a, a store run. Yep. Once you're done putting stuff away, can you yeah. go to Whole Foods? Yeah, sure. Thank you. I just found out that we don't have a key ingredient, cilantro, so now we have to make a store run ourselves to buy it because I can't do two of our recipes without it. So frustrating, I'm gonna reach out to the rep in a little bit. Now I was making sure that they didn't charge for the cilantro that didn't show up. I have my little order guide over here. I know everything that came. I know what they've used at this point. They're almost done with the prep. So I'm gonna go ahead and check our inventory and place an order for tomorrow. I create the order guide to have an efficient way of placing orders so that we don't miss our cutoff time, but also the parts are really important because that's one of the ways that we control food cost. As I go down the list, I'm marking how much of each ingredient that I need, if we need it at all. 
black shallots, cipollini onions, red pearl onions. All right, great, great, great. So a lot of this is a guessing game. I'm not over here actually counting every single potato because that would take me forever. And I do a lot of eyeballing. Just fresh herbs is something that Chef Marcus and I both really, really love. It's a great way to bring so much brightness to the dish. Okay, so now we're done with the walk-in. I'm gonna go outside and check all our spices and dry goods. The most important thing that I'm looking for on our spice rack is uh, barbarre. Barbarre is an Ethiopian spice that we use in about 50% of our menu here. It takes about a week and a half to get here. So I have to stay on top of it because if we run out, <sighs> it's gonna be a bad day at Havamar. If we run out of barbarre, I'll tell you that. We are pretty low on barbarre. I have to reach out to my girl uh, Lem Lem over at work and a spice. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a note to place an order for it today. I can't reach it, Herbert. You gotta put it back. Thank you. Anything tall, you can reach for me. If you need something from the floor, I got you. I'm closer to the ground than you are, Herbert. Ordering is done, but it's one o'clock now. I really need to start breaking down lobsters. Ha. On your breath, coming down. Okay, not too bad today. I have about five live lobsters that I have to break down. I'll be prepping these lobsters specifically for our mermaid black rice today. We use John John mushrooms, which is a very typical in Haitian cuisine. When we use the John John mushrooms, it gives it like a deep brown color, but I want it to be black. So we add squid ink to our dish to get the color all the way black. The reason I'm breaking down lobster is because our butcher has a very heavy prep list today. So I'm just taking it off of his hands, but it also keeps my, my skills intact. And you know, I can't get rusty out here or else who's gonna follow my instructions. So today I have a stage. A stage is a working interview in a kitchen. So before anybody can get hired, we actually have them go on a station and uh, kind of show us what they can do. So today we have Helena. Helena was on collard green duty. That's a very mundane, typical job for an intern, but I had a little chat and she let me know that she has broken down lobster before. I feel like you should refresh my memory. Okay, <laughs> no, no worries, don't worry. There's like different ways of doing it, obviously. Pointy end, right in, put your knife down, curl the tail. You don't want it to snap on your fingers. Twist, separate the tail, twist, separate the claw. Twist, separate the claw, separate the, all the insides from the brain. Clean that off, wash it. Take off all the brains and all the inside, give that a nice wash. So let's do the second one. How do you feel? Should I do one more? Do you want to, you feel good? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hold the body down, yep. All the way down, yep. Pull, uh, fold the oh, tail in, because if it, Closes on you, there you go. So that's your first time doing that? Live lobster. She did that like a pro. <laughs> Done breaking down lobsters. I'm just gonna give these a quick steam. Okay, it's two o'clock. My sous chefs are here. I need to check in with them and talk about our shift. You gotta meet my sous chef extraordinaires, Chef Jay. Hello. And Chef Mo. Oh, a restaurant of this scale ran by all women of color. It's never been done before. So get a good look, cause you better get used to it. This is it, this is the future. We like to greet each other with a little hand hug. Hello, welcome back. <laughs> it's nice to see you. Another day. Another day. 130 in the books tonight at six o'clock. Gonna be a heavy push. And then after that, it's steady. Smooth sailing. Smooth sailing. Last reservation's at 8.45. Beautiful. Uh, everybody has to be out here by 4.30. Mobilize the troops. Mobilize the troops. Yep. So it's 2.30, I have about 30 minutes before my nighttime crew gets here. I'm gonna go and do some administrative work, get the schedule out of the way. Once a week I have a meeting with our CFO. She gives me a projected goal for our labor so we can meet our uh, bottom line profitability. So what I'm doing right now is I'm putting in everybody's schedules and this system lets me know how much my projected overtime is. So on schedule right now, I have 20 back of house employees. I send this report to uh, our CFO and she in turn lets me know if I need to cut hours, if I'm okay to proceed. That's how we stay profitable. Okay, so it's three o'clock. My uh, line cooks have just arrived. I'm gonna call them over to go over notes for tonight's dinner service. 
So we have four stations here. We have uh, fryer, saute, seafood and garde manger, which I kind of combined into one station, and then pastry. Team Huddle Up, some notes for today. So we have a new face. Helena. Hello, Helena. Hello. Jared's gonna go ahead and uh, show her the ropes for Garmanje, right? Yep. Obviously, we're gonna do our. Oh, Let's see who the winner is today. Mine. You got sushi in there? Grabby Patty, son. Wait! You know, the only way to incorporate your personality into uh, our uniform is the socks. That's the only place that takes leeway. And I always bring my sock game. And then the team kind of took that and ran with it. So since day one, we've had a sock contest. It's gotten aggressive through, throughout the time. We got Krabby Patties. Krabby Patty. Okay, okay. You take the cake. Switched up, switched so up. You, you get bragging rights for the rest of the shift. Yeah, that's pretty easy. Okay, let's have a dope shift team. Uh, let's do our... Bring it, in, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. Come on. All right, well, on three. One, two, three. Yeah! <laughs> All right. So right now it's a little after three. I'm gonna do my last couple of rounds with the morning team, and then I'm gonna start uh, setting up the pass with Mo. Just some last couple of things I haven't tasted yet. We're almost ready for service. Okay, it's four o'clock. We have one hour left for dinner service. Last thing to do is set up this pass with Chef Mo. I'm gonna check in with her and see uh, how I can help her. The pass is the, is the bridge between the kitchen and the front of house. So all the food that gets cooked stops over here in the pass where the chefs get a last look at it. And we also do the last minute touches. We do all the garnishes. So when we're setting up the pass right now, we're setting up all our garnishes. I usually do, um one ash oil right here as well. Everybody has their own way of setting up their pass. We're doing it Mo's way now. She's letting me know what she needs to be in the pass all night. At this point, my job is supporting the team, make sure we have everything that we need to go into dinner service, make sure the shift is as smooth as possible. You always want to set up a station that gives you the quickest access to one, things that you use the most. It has to be closer to you. And then we also separate it for cleanliness reasons. So the herbs are kind of separated from our wet ingredients because you don't want to be reaching over with wet ingredients over, over your herbs. So everything kind of has a strategy behind it. All our mees is done for the past. Front of house is already set up, ready to go. It's 4.45, we have 15 minutes before our guests start to arrive. So I hope you have a better idea of what it's like being an executive chef here at Hava Mar. Well, it's been really fun having you here, but I really do gotta feed some guests, so. If you want to eat here, make some reservations, come back and visit us, but you got to go now. Bye! See ya! <laughs>